Welcome to my channel. I'm Peachy and thank you for watching this week's Salute to Women's History Month. I hope you enjoy this little stroll through history and learn a little about these amazing women who have molded the times we live in. You may know today's spotlight or you may not. But that being said, let's go. As a leading civil rights political and legal advocate for African Americans and women, Sadie Tanner Mosel Alexander is considered to be a fighter for social justice. Some of her greatest achievements. In 1921, she was the first African American woman to receive a PhD in the United States. Also in 1921, she was the first African American woman to receive a PhD in economics from the University of Pennsylvania. In 1927, she was the first African-American woman to enroll and earn a law degree from the University of Pennsylvania. In 1943, she was the first woman to hold a national office in the National Bar Association. Alexander came from a family with a rich legacy. Her maternal grandfather, Benjamin Tucker Tanner, was appointed the Bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Her aunt, Hallie Tanner Dillon Johnson, was the first African-American woman to receive a license to practice medicine in Alabama. And her uncle was internationally acclaimed artist, Henry Osawa Tanner. Her father, Aaron Albert Mosel, was the first African-American to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania Law School in 1888. Her uncle, Nathan Francis Mosel, was the first African-American physician to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania Medical School and co-founded the Frederick Douglass Hospital in 1895. Born in Philadelphia in 1898 as Sarah Tana Mosel, she would be called Sadie through her life. Throughout her childhood, Alexander would live between Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. with her mother and older siblings. In 1915, she graduated from the M Street School and attended the University of Pennsylvania School of Education. Alexander graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1918 and the following year she received her master's degree in economics. Awarded the Francis Sargent Pepper Fellowship, Alexander went on to become the first African American woman to receive a PhD in the United States. Of this experience, she said, I can well remember marching down Broad Street from Mercantile Hall to the Academy of Music where there were photographers from all over the world wanting to take my picture. After receiving her PhD in economics from the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business, Alexander accepted a position with the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company, where she worked for two years before returning to Philadelphia to marry Raymond Alexander in 1923. Soon after marrying Raymond Alexander, she enrolled in the University of Pennsylvania's Law School, where she became a very active student working as a contributing writer and associate editor of the University of Pennsylvania Law Review. In 1927, Alexander graduated from the University School of Law and later became the first African-American woman to pass and be admitted to the Pennsylvania State Bar. For 32 years, Alexander worked with her husband, specializing in family and estate law. In addition to practicing law, Alexander was served as assistant city solicitor for the city of Pennsylvania from 1928 to 1930 and again from 1934 to 1938. The Alexanders were active participants in the civil rights movement and practiced civil rights law as well. While her husband served on the city council, Alexander was appointed to President Harry Truman's Committee of Human Rights in 1947. In this position, Alexander helped to develop the concept of a national civil rights policy when she co-authored the report to secure these rights. In the report, Alexander argues that Americans, regardless of gender or race, should be granted the opportunity to improve themselves and in doing so, strengthen the United States. Later, Alexander served on the Commission of Human Relations of the City of Pennsylvania from 1952 to 1958. 
1959 when her husband was appointed as a judge to the Court of Common Pleas in Philadelphia. Alexander continued to practice law until her retirement in 1982. She later died in 1989 in Philadelphia. Pretty interesting, right? You know, there are some others you can check out here on the channel. Those boxes should pop up for you shortly. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I hope I see you on the next installment. If you are so inclined, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can see when I post new content. Have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, whichever time you're watching this, and catch you on the next episode. Be safe out there. Bye for now.